Hey guys, I just wanna let you know, we charge a standard fee here for all the reviews we do. It helps us keep the site going, but I wanna be honest with you, these aren't meant to be endorsements. Let's get into it. Hey guys, beautiful day, we brought you to a special spot. This is Palos Verde South. Uh, it drives along the coast. Palos Verdes is like this big kind of mountain and LA is on the other side over there. This is the Terrania Resort and just a beautiful beach. You can actually walk along and learn about the history of the area. It's just such a, a beautiful natural area and they have these uh, bike paths that go along the street. So we'll frequently see people road biking just all along the coast. I love it. And this is exactly the type of bike that we see. Uh, maybe not electric, usually it's acoustic. Uh, this is the Bulls Desert Falcon Evo. And Evo is that integrated battery design. Whenever you hear that from Bulls, that's what it's talking about. Uh, this is an aluminum alloy bike. Now, I have seen some carbon bikes that have been out in the space. They are using carbon here on the seat post, sort of an oval design, 30.9 millimeters. If you wanted to change that out for something, maybe like the carbon fiber um, connect body float, like. That, that would be really, really cool. I mean, this bike, it's very aggressive. You've got this forward like hoods, drops, nice hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. We're actually looking at a 160 because this is sort of like pre-production that we're looking at here. It's, it's fairly complete, but there are a few pieces that are going to be different and I'll try to call those out. Uh, Shimano GRX all the way through, including the drivetrain and it has DI2 electronic shifting got the paddle shifter over here. This is a higher gear and then together lower gear. It's worked very, very well, very crisp. The bike feels amazing and you can just see, you know, first of all, it comes in three different frame sizes so you can get that fit dialed in just right. And in so doing, you have different length stems and different width bars and also the crank arm. So 170 or 175. We're looking at the medium frame right here, 55. So they have 50, 55 or 60 centimeters. Again, coming back to these hydraulic disc brakes, high end stuff, Shimano Ice Tech. Uh, really nicely designed and they've even integrated the magnet for the rear wheel speed sensor right into the arm for that rear disc brake. That's the kind of stuff that Bulls does. They do a really good job and I love the calipers here as well. GRX, they got the little heat sink. Just, just amazing. Bladed spokes here. Uh, these are 28 hole rims. DT Swiss HE 1800. I've got all the specs back at the website. That's something I really, I really go for. I come from a road cycling background, but it, more of an enthusiast, right? Some of these bikes, this is $62.99. You're paying, you're paying a bit of money for this. It's interesting. You can pay a lot more than that for a non-electric road bike. And what I try to do is feel out like, you know, what are the differences here? What are you getting? We're well, certainly going to be able to climb a bit easier. If you're someone like me with a knee injury, I struggle with, with the longer rides when I encounter a hill, my knees all warmed up, but I just, I can't climb as effectively. Uh, or maybe it becomes sort of rainy or windy. We did get wet earlier, Fernando and I were riding around trying not to slide out on this because it is a speed Pedelec. You can see down here, this is the Bosch Performance Line Speed, fourth generation motor right there, now just 6.3 pounds, amazing. The old Performance Line Speed was 8.8 .8 pounds. It's a significant weight difference. 41.5 pounds for the bike that you see here. Again, I mentioned that this is not a carbon fiber frame. It's aluminum alloy, maybe a little bit more durable. In recent years, you know, I've, I was looking at like specialized mountain bikes. Um, they've got like the carbon fiber version and it does have sort of a different ride feel. Um, there's maybe some vibration dampening qualities, but I've also had my bikes banged up a little bit. So for mountain bikes, I've kind of leaned towards aluminum alloy. They have super lightweight stuff. This is 6061 aluminum alloy. The ride feels pretty good. Uh, at higher speeds, up to 28 mile per hour, supported by that motor, it feels it feels pretty steady. I mean, there's there's definitely some more weight here than a traditional road bike, uh, just because you do have that Power Tube 500 battery right in there. That's 6.4 pounds. So 6.4 pounds with a nice plastic cover. Now, some of the older Bulls bikes had aluminum alloy covers, which added a lot of weight. And to me, it's like well, you know, come on, especially for a road bike, want to keep that lightweight. And then they were kind of paint matched and. And it was difficult if you had maybe a couple bikes, you have a mountain bike, you have a road bike, if they both use the power tube, uh, swapping those out, you actually had to take the cover off of the battery, where in this case, uh, the cover just comes off of the frame. See, it's just this plastic thing. I really like this. It's durable. You can see a little bit of water has been flecked up against that, but the battery itself already has an aluminum alloy casing. It's pretty solid. So anyway, coming back to the motor, 
6.3 pounds on this. Really nice, tight casing on these. We've got a plastic, almost like a scuff guard along the bottom. It's just more compact than the older Bosch motor. Now offers up to 75 newton meters of torque, whereas the old performance line speed generation three, it only offered 63 newton meters of torque. This thing accelerates wonderfully. I was like, Whoa, I mean, I was genuinely excited. This is the first time I've tried the fourth generation. And you can see just on the other side here, 48 tooth chainring, standard size. It's not that smaller, like reduction gear thing that we've seen in uh, generation three. So for me, that's a big deal. It's, it's quiet, it's smooth, still has shift detection, still just a really nice setup. But um, nice to see just the little improvements that Bulls has made in addition to some of the, the way that they integrate it through axles, 142 millimeter hub spacing in the rear with 12 millimeter through axle, 12 millimeter up front, 100 millimeter hub spacing, standard carbon fiber fork. So there is a little bit of carbon fiber, gonna be some vibration dampening, mid dish rims. And we're looking at the Schwabi E1. So these are e-bike specific, I believe, Addicts race compound, 50 kilometer per hour rated. So they are meant to be a little bit more durable, high speed application. A Centric 28 by 1.25, that's 700 by 32C. I've got all those specs back at the website as well, but just want to call them out while we're here on the ground. And, and again, I know this is 160 down here, but I've been told it's going to be 180, which is nice. Higher speeds, a little bit of a heavier bike. It's, it's really good to have um, powerful brakes. And sometimes when I'm up in the hoods like this, you know, I'm not getting as good of leverage as when I'm down here in the drops. So I like hydraulic disc brakes. That's, I've always been a fan of that. You might also notice how clean everything is up here. See all these cables? They're actually being routed like, well, I guess this is just for the, the button pad. And then down here, I think this is for the electronic shifter and then the wire back here. So it's just super clean. See how there aren't any like extra wires. They aren't even using this, this extra port up here. So that was one of the first things I noticed just how clean it was, just how nice the cockpit and everything uh, is, is set up. Also pretty comfortable saddle. Uh, Fernando, would you mind helping me swing the bike around? I wanna show the other side real quick. Yeah, that's great. So if you lose this, if it flies off a cliff or something, you can get a replacement. It's easier, it's cheaper, and it's lighter. The best of all worlds but it only comes in black. Great job, man, thank you, thank you very much. So this is what the other side of the bike looks like. Um, only available in high step, of course, kind of the diamond configuration. 48 tooth chain ring, we talked about FSA, we've got that aluminum alloy, kind of a bash guard almost. A little bit of a, a chain guard, if you're wearing pants or something, should keep them clear of the chain itself. And then look at how the frames cut away. So it's not exactly like a guide, it's not quite, you know, it doesn't have a secondary plate, but you're gonna save some weight. And it is like a narrow wide tooth pattern. So that's gonna give you some better chain retention. Just really, really nice setup. And then back here, it says Dior XT, but I think this is also going to be, like we talked about GRX, like the whole group set. So it, it's still working electronically shifted DI2 right now, but I, I, I just don't think that that's quite final what we're looking at. However, we do have 11 to 42 teeth on an 11 sprocket uh, cassette. It's a nice spread back here, just really clean. And when you, you combine like that electronic shifting, which can be really finely tuned, you're not gonna get cable stretch, it's very durable with the Bosch uh, shift detection system, you end up with something just really, really smooth and sweet. So I talked before about rear wheel speed being measured. It's also measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque. Those three signals over a thousand times per second and in so doing, you get this really nice smooth ramp up. I was pedaling on this just very gently, just kind of keeping up and the motor's just very like, you know, just a little bit of power or none at all if I was if I was backing off. But as soon as I applied pressure, you feel it instantly. And when you're on a bike like this, it's like a race car. I mean, there's no resistance in these, these tires. There's no suspension. You're not really losing any of your energy. It's being transferred directly into the bike, into the wheels, and you just go and you really go fast with that motor. Again, 75 Newton meters of torque when you're in uh, the highest level of assist. So very impressive to me. I like that they've got this clear plastic sticker slap guard. So they're paying attention to the details. Two bottle cage bosses. And this one's set up with the Monkey Lynx magnetic adapter. So they have a bottle, it's kind of expensive, but you could get that and it just clips right onto the frame. A little bit easier to use than even some of the side mounting uh, bottle cages out there. So I think that's a, that's a pretty good overview. Um, I also want to call out the way that they've designed the 
the locking core and the charging port for the battery. Notice how they've set them up high instead of down low or on the left side. It's nice that they're on the non-drive side. This, this bike doesn't have a kickstand. If you need to lay it down, you know, put the pedal down like that. Be careful with the uh, handlebar. And then you could access the battery or charge it when it was on its side. So that's what the charging port looks like. Here is the charger over here. It's a four amp, it's like 1.7 pounds fairly lightweight. Four amps is, is fast. If you aren't familiar with e-bikes, a lot of chargers are just two amps. So for me, that's a big win. It's easy enough. You could toss it in your backpack and top off if you're out at a resort or at a friend's house or something like that. Um, you know, with a power pack 500, you're getting a pretty good capacity. They do have like a 625 watt hour battery now, but apparently it wouldn't fit in this frame. It's a little bit more compact. So they went with the 500 good enough. And again, cross compatible with other downward mounting power tube 500s. And let's see here, just kind of scanning along. I think I want to take that out. I'm going to ask Fernando to help. Do you mind taking the battery out real quick, bud? Oh, oh, before I hand these keys off. Abus, it's got that key card so you can actually match this if you get like a folding lock or some of their other uh, locking devices. That's really wonderful. You don't have to worry about misplacing keys. So he's gonna turn it for the first step and in so doing, I'll try to stabilize. See how it drops down to that first position and then there's a little button at the top. You press the button and it comes the rest of the way. So that's designed so you don't drop the battery. They are fairly expensive. I think it's like 900 bucks to replace one of these and 6.4 pounds measuring this back at the house does have a power level indicator that same proprietary charging port design works with the charger you don't have to have like a dongle adapter or anything aluminum alloy casing it's pretty sturdy these are really nice so you know you could i think you could just put that plastic cover on this thing and ride it without the battery if you wanted you could yeah yeah i mean it's you, you know use a little bit more weight down here 6.3 pound motor i'm saying this because you guys also have like the fatzua motor and that thing's really light. It's like 2.8 pounds for the little, it's, it's just like a gearbox kind of thing, bottom bracket. It doesn't incorporate the motor. The motor's actually inside of like a battery shape thing that has a battery and a motor. This is definitely much more powerful, much faster. For people who want that like e-bike experience, this is gonna be where you go. But of course it's heavier. That bike was like in the 30 pound range. This one's in the 40 pound range. So thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and pop that back in, Fernando. Sometimes you need to make sure the keys are in the right position. Make sure it's lined up at the bottom there. Clips in, push it up the rest of the way. There we go. And I love this cover right here. Just, it's on like a leash. It's not gonna get set down and, and lost. And then I think you, what do you put the two prongs up and then the latch goes at the bottom. So there you go, guys. I think that's a pretty comprehensive overview of this bike. I welcome your feedback and comments or things that you notice that are even more technical. But of course, I've done my best to document everything back on the website. Fernando, is there anything else that you care to say about this bike or that I might not have covered? Uh, this is, uh, like you say, this is a great bike for people who want that torque and want to experience a e-bike. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the power from a, from a road bike, right? From a road bike. What's the other one called that we looked at? It's like the... Uh, the other was the Alpine... Um, Hawk? Alpine Hawk Evo, yeah. Yeah, Alpine Hawk Evo. So that's another one. And it, one, it is a carbon fiber, so that helped to reduce the weight just a little bit. This is the Desert Falcon Evo. I think that's it, guys. We're gonna get ready to hop on this, but first, let's go through to the display. So this is the Bosch Kiox. I just powered it down because I wanted to show you. It is magnetic, you can take it off. It's got a little micro USB port in the bottom, which is really nice. You could maintain like a smartphone can imagine mounting that like here, possibly on that stem cap. Although, you know, then you'd need to move this little accessory bar out for the button pad. Drop bar setups are always a little bit tricky with, with e-bike uh, control panels and stuff. Cause it's like, you know, your hands could be in multiple positions. So they've done the best they can. This is, it's pretty easy to get to. You got the little charging port at the bottom of that. There's some pretty cool options. I like this display. It's got Gorilla Glass, it's color. So if you're pretty far back, you can actually sense what's going on without actually having to read it. So I'm gonna power it up. It says Kiox, comes to life pretty quickly. It says there's an update for us. We're like, now nah, we don't do it right now. This is off. This is the lowest level of assist. It's just like a bike, right? And there's, it's designed to be like no friction. So if you did take that battery out, you could still ride this around like a bike, um, no problem. If I press the plus or minus keys, it goes through the different levels of assist. You can see the color change. So Eco is green. 
Tour is blue, Sport is purple, Turbo is red, and I think you got 340% assist feedback. And you can see there's this like spiral thing. So as I pedal, it, it sort of fills in with uh, how much work you're doing and also how much the bike is doing. Love that there's a percentage indicator on that battery infographic. It's not just like five bars. Um, it's much more precise. And that's good, you know, if you, if you get out there and you're starting to get low on battery to know how close you are. So there's a right and a left toggle button here. We can go to some different menus, clock, range. Range is really cool because it dynamically updates if I change assist level. 36 miles, all the way to the lowest level of assist, 83 miles, based on the last, you know, mile or so of riding. And this comes down to like how full your your tires are, what the terrain is like, where we are right now, we're at the top of a hill. So our range might drop a little bit. And over time, the lithium ion battery cells, you know, to, you wanna take care of those by avoiding extreme heat, by keeping it at least 20% charge. You wanna keep it from going all the way to zero and that's gonna help extend the life of your battery. But this range indicator is fairly accurate. So it's a really nice, it's a really nice um, piece of software. Uh, trip distance, ride time. Cadence is really cool. The new Bosch motors, they give you more than 120 RPM support. So that's how fast you're pedaling it. I am someone who loves to spin. I like to pedal fast and instead of slow and powerful because of my knee sensitivity. So the fact that the motor can keep up with me, it's not gonna just drop out and require me to downshift and then I lose my speed and the fun goes away. This bike can keep up. For me, that is huge. Hey, max speed 44.5. Was that you, Fernando? <laughs> we, got, we were we were hauling out here. We're trying to be careful. It's like, you know, wet streets and stuff. Uh, average speed 20. And then there's like four readouts here, beats per minute, heart rate. So they do have like a smartphone app that can sync with this, give you more information. You can kind of tie your heart rate into it. Um, and then there's a battery infographic here. There's settings. There's so much about this. I've actually done uh, a little video back in the EBR forums all about this display. So you can get all the information, get a little bit deeper, but I wanted to give you a quick overview. I like that this is adjustable. You can swivel it to reduce glare if you need to, that the buttons are fairly reachable. It does still have walk mode. So as long as you're uh, not in the zero level of assist, it won't work if you're in zero, but as long as you're in one of the four levels, you can press that and hold the plus button and then it'll, it'll drive forward slowly. And that's a really nice feature to have. Okay, now I think we're good. We good, we good to go? Oh, yeah. We're gonna go for a ride, guys. Okay, guys, so I've been looping around this parking lot trying to find a safe space to do a little bit of riding and filming. It's tricky with a bike like this because the steering's a little bit more aggressive. Um, but I'm gonna try to demonstrate that higher torque. I'm in turbo, uh, being able to get 75 newton meters of torque and hit and maintain that higher top speed is just incredible. So we've got a runway here. It's actually an incline. Um, I'm gonna go through, uh, unfortunately, it's gonna be hard to shift gears because they're on the right there. I might, might switch hands with the camera. Oh, okay, here we go. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm not putting all my energy into this because I feel a little bit unstable. I like to ride with my left hand, so I'm gonna turn it around here for a second. Hand the camera off. There we go. Uh, it's just such a thrill. I mean, we're easily up to, we were like 43. I just want to be careful here because I'm one-handed braking. Oh boy. This bike is a blast. I wish I had my gl I like glasses to keep the wind out of my face. It's just incredible. This was the dream. Like years ago, when I got my first e-bike, it's like seven years ago. So disappointed. It was heavy. It was like slow. It wasn't very dynamic. You know, it just, it was just such a disappointment. This has been incredible very very satisfying smooth pretty quiet i mean you still hear the like ring there's a little bit of that but it's it's less uh, in my opinion than the older performance line motors gen 3 with the smaller sprocket okay guys from here you can see that 48 tooth chain ring narrow wide love that 11 to 42 tooth cassette in the rear this particular derailleur, again, I don't think that's the, the stock derailleur, but it does have that one-way clutch. We can kind of put that in the up position. It tightens things up a bit. Um, really nice setup. I like Shimano uh, gear, and the idea with this shot is that you're going to be able to see and hear the motor. 
Um, I'm going to be applying pressure. I'm going to be riding in the highest level of assist and switching gears. So there should be a little bit of a, a delay with that motor whenever I shift gears, and that's the shift detection designed uh, to, to reduce wear and tear. But it's still up to you. I mean, you can take a an acoustic road bike and climb a hill and push hard and shift gears, and you're going to wear your uh, drivetrain out same way. But with with a motor, 75 newton meters of torque, it's just it's a whole other story. So go into it easy, ease off when you shift gears for the best possible performance. Okay, so we actually got up to 46 kilometers per hour. That's what the display is set up as right now, kilometers versus miles. And that's faster than the bike, uh, than the motor supports. And at that point, it's designed to freewheel, so it's not slowing you down. I was able to hit 46. Uh, so to me, that just demonstrates just how the power delivery on this bike, how efficient it is. That wasn't very hard, and I was, I was on a little bit of an ascent. So this time I'm gonna turn around and go down. Go. Woo. I think we got a new record, guys. Let's see. New max speed, 51.2 kilometers per hour. That is me, that's my record. Love it. Fernando, can we trade off and I can get you on this bike? Sweet. That one's got the kickstand. It's a little bit easier to work with. Here we go. What's that one called? It's the Urban Evo, the new Urban Evo. It's new Urban Evo. We're also gonna check this bike out. Pretty sweet. And you know, it has the Purion up here. So we're in turbo, still the kickstand. Um, yeah, I just want to follow you. Here, you can go. Just awesome. Brake test. I don't think he heard me. Hey, I was looking for a brake test. <laughs> Why don't you do a brake test right here? I want to see that. Oh. <laughs> He's focused on the performance. Loving that speed. Same motor right here, guys. I feel more comfortable going fast on this one. Woo. I don't think that speedometer is working because we're definitely going more than 20 miles per hour doing our best out here trying to get different locations it was sort of rainy on top of the top of the hill earlier but uh i think that's it you guys i always have fun looking at new motors trying to give you as much information as possible i'm really impressed with that bike it's just a race car it's just a blast For the full written review we'll see you back at electricbikereview.com ride safe out there this is a class three electric bike so follow the rules have fun love you see you next time